Hey, welcome in. It is good to have you again. Today we are getting into submitted communication. My name is Austin Hoxie, and today I am pumped to be interviewing one of my favorite teammates ever. My wife. Only, only teammate. My, my only, only missus. Robin, <laughs> welcome. How are you? Good. I'm excited to be here today. Glad to be here as well. Well, we're getting into submitted communication as our relational value that we see in the life of Jesus. And we have defined submitted communication as this. We value people sharing ourselves while considering others' choices, words, and perspectives. And so I'd love to hear what has been your experience with submitted communication. Yeah, that is a big question. That's yeah, a big dude. And I think it's important to even pull out the word submitted and kind of what we mean, what my experience with that has been is we actually defer to one another. Mm, that's a great word. And that goes both ways inside of relationship. And I think probably since you mentioned it earlier, just we're married. <laughs> and that's funny to be talking about submitted communication and that gets played out a lot in marriage. Absolutely. And so a lot of our deferring to one another, it goes both ways inside of our marriage. Mm -hmm. And so um, that I think is just really important to pull out. But I think my experience with communication as a whole, I tend to be a very direct, assertive communicator. Um, I think even communication as a whole, I think my experience with growing up is just communication. Whoever has the is the most right or is has the strongest voice or, um, I don't know. I think there's just a lot of communication that's informational and it's around right and wrong. Totally. And so I think my tendency is to, to communicate in that way. And I think what that creates is some really assertive communicators. Mm -hmm. And I think it creates communicators who will hold back and not share. Yeah. And so I think what we're describing with submitted communication is this idea that everybody has a part to play and has a voice to bring in the situation and it's valuable to make room for them. That's good. It even makes sense in the diversity of personality and how we communicate externally uh, is very diverse, like what you're describing. But then internally, what do we value? And the value of submitted communication or deferring to one another really is what we see in the life of Jesus, which is crazy because you're talk talking about God coming to earth as a man and functioning in this idea of submission is right. mind-blowing. Could you imagine Jesus being overly assertive and domineering? Yeah, that would be crazy. Or could you imagine Jesus being um, holding back because he didn't think his voice was important? Both of those would be whack. Mm-hmm. So how, how do you see submitted communication in the life of Jesus? Um, so I think probably I tried to pull out a few scriptures, but hopefully they feel helpful for everybody. Um, Mark 10 and John 3 are the two references, um, those two chapters. But um, in Mark 10, you see Jesus talking to his disciples, and he has some pretty bold disciples. And I think it's James and John, and they come to Jesus and they say, hey, we want to sit at your right and your left hand. And so instead of Jesus coming in like, that's wrong, no, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe, maybe some of us would communicate. personality, Mike. Um, he stepped in and valued them. He listened to them and considered, actually considered what they had to say, not in the sense of like he could give it to them, but he made room for them. Mm. And then he shared. Yeah. Um, and the dialogue ends up where Jesus basically gets to reveal um, something about the kingdom in their dialogue. It's a dialogue. Yeah. Um, another place you see this is John 3, where Jesus is visiting the house of Nicodemus. I love it because he didn't like expose Nicodemus. He didn't expose, you know, all of Nicodemus's fear or, or like anxiety around meeting with Jesus. He, he met him where he was at. And then he didn't correct him. He had a conversation. And he was offering himself. And of course, Jesus is truth. He is life. And so he's offering that in conversation um, with Nicodemus. And he allowed a conversation to happen. He didn't shut down totally. the weird thoughts that Nicodemus was having. 
Yeah, I, I think I, I love it too, because as Jesus is considering their perspective, their words, their their intentions even, he doesn't um, come into these interactions like predefined, mm-hmm. uh, but he actually allows them to shape them. Even it makes me think of um, the woman caught in adultery. And in this interaction, he's both communicating with the woman, maybe not with words, but then also with the people that caught her. Right. Kind of the Jews around. And there was a standard that they were bringing in the law. But Jesus responded by asking questions, essentially drawing out their perspective and allowing them in a way to diagnose themselves. And he doesn't shrink back. Right. Like... He gives them permission to still cast a stone. He gives the woman permission to still go on sinning if she wants. But he's not forceful or domineering or using his personality in a way to control people, maybe. Right. But instead is interacting them with them in his words. I would say his tone as well. Still putting value on them. Still putting value on where they're coming from. And it's mind-blowing. Because it's like, this is God. Mm -hmm. Like, he could be domineering if he wanted to. Right. And he doesn't shrink back, but still values, you know, weak people. It's crazy. Um, Well, how have you, like, are there any examples as we've been kind of putting this into practice the last six months that come to mind where this has been really shaping for you? Well, and I do want to say with that last example, if this is okay, and then I Mm -hmm. can share. But the, um, he did tell the woman to go and stop sinning, Mm -hmm. right? But he, it was a, he, it was a releasing where she had a choice. Totally. And I love what you're saying there because at some level, submitted communication is just communication without control. Like, I'm not trying to control you with how I'm communicating with you. I'm just simply, I'm simply offering myself. I'm simply offering communication. And I think in that way, um, we can build it like builds relationship and it builds something together where it creates more connection like the woman at the cotton adultery could maybe feel more connected to jesus would want to choose him absolutely right and she felt that value from him Mm -hmm. like it and it was how he was communicating yeah yeah totally i'm with you so okay so how i've seen this play out i had an experience um, this, so you can imagine my background, what I shared a little bit earlier, this one maybe has been a little tricky for me. Yeah. You're a firecracker. Um, I have a lot of thoughts and, need to be heard. um, very quickly mm-hmm. now. Yep. And so, so, so this is something that I feel like has been being worked out in my life for a long time, but, um, I had this experience, this aha moment, um, in a, actually a work setting. And, um, I was in a work meeting with a few other pastors and, um, we had a a leader leading the meeting and they were communicating. Um, I don't know. I don't even know about what topic anymore, but they were, it was kind of more of a dialogue. Um, but it was like leading to a certain point. And this leader was kind of trying to wrap it up or, or kind of create some clarity. And internally I was like, wow, he missed something. He missed saying something. And I think probably for me, what would have ro- like rised up in the past or came up in the past is, oh, I need to like make sure that we know that this thing is important and is missing. And yeah. so I would want to come in heavy, maybe. It Almost would... like using your personality to control or shift something. Yeah. Or, I mean, I won't think I would have intentionally done that like that, but yeah. heavy. Yeah. And instead, I kind of felt this patience to to honor what had been said and to bring my offer my thought kind of in a way like building into the conversation like building it Mm -hmm. and so he had gotten done speaking and I just said hey I really like that thought this is what I heard you say I think this is awesome and I feel like this goes along with that yeah and something happened something happened inside of me something happened in the room i was like whoa the holy spirit just showed up in the conversation it was like it expanded like the and what i offered was just a part of the puzzle it was just a piece of the puzzle it wasn't the thing um but it made room 
for the kingdom. It made room for the Holy Spirit. And we all were edified, encouraged, and built up in that moment. Yeah. And I walked away being like, if that's how I can communicate, I want that. Totally. So that was my first experience, I think, with submitted communication. Yeah, and I was actually at that moment. And there's two things happening because both of you all were engaged in submitted communication in that he chose not to feel slighted, but receive you and understand that while he was the expert on what we were talking about, you were bringing another part of it. And the way you brought it and the way he received it allowed everyone in the room to be edified and built up in an increasing measure than if there was just one person. And it was beautiful. I remember that moment for sure. So Uh, I've been practicing this at home, which has probably been... With who? With with you. Oh, me me too. I've been a little bit. (laughs) And I think probably something, um, and specifically this semester, and um, like we talked about in our intro episode, Austin and I are planting a church together. We have four kids. Um, We have a few different things going on, and we tend to have opposite perspectives from each other on pretty much everything. I don't I can't think of a thing that we would have the same thought on it. Chipotle. I don't even know about that. Mm. I don't even know. And so um, probably what this has looked like for me in practice this semester, in this last six months um, of this initial church plant, has been stopping myself to try to see from your perspective mm-hmm. about something. Or even seek your perspective first so that I could learn about you. Totally. Knowing that actually maybe both of our perspectives are actually where we're going to land. Um, We're actually going to build something out of both of our perspectives and thoughts. Um, But instead of coming in heavy or like there is a, a right or a wrong or like my voice is more valuable, I will try to stop and listen to your perspective. And I think I've even um, started seeing this with our kids. Um, I've been slowing down to do use submitted communication with our kids, even though I'm their mom. I, I actually want to like to be submitted in my communication to them. Absolutely. And it's produced actually a lot of connection in our home. Our daughter the other day was like, I want to come home and talk to you and be around you guys. And I think a lar- large part of it is of how we're communicating. Absolutely. Because she experiences the value that she has. Mm -hmm. Not in like an explicit thing, but in a cultural way, we are communing with each other. Right. It is unbelievable. I think uh, what what I've, it's been a delight as well to practice this with you. But the idea of valuing the other person before the communication starts has been significant for me especially coming off of 2020, 2021, the social nature of our culture and how divisive it is right now, or even the kind of frame. We don't talk about religion and politics, you know, on vacation or or with our family is so highlighting. Well, it's because we don't value the other perspective. We're not starting from this place of, oh, you have a perspective and experience that has value that I could receive from, which speaks of that Uh, internal posture of I actually want to defer and when the body of Christ is functioning in that separation we're just a bunch of fractured little pieces that see very narrow aspects of God which is really just sad for all of us right I think that scripture in um, 1 Corinthians has been also really helpful for me saying we see in part and know in part Mm -hmm. and and for all of us out there, whether you're a strong communicator or you would rather pull back, we both need to know that what we have to bring is a part. Totally. And so that should be convicting for us who are strong communicators that I only have a part and I don't see everything. And for those who of us who would rather pull back, like actually you have an important part to offer. Mm-hmm. And if you don't bring it, then we're missing that part. Totally. And not to just... Uh, highlight the strong communicators on the other side the more timid communicators like submitted does not mean timid right uh, submission is an internal posture like if you are choosing to not value your own perspective then you will have no ability to practice communication instead you'll just be constantly a one-way receptor that doesn't do anything mm-hmm. and so we're not trying to you know, strong arm the strong communicators. 
Because submission is internal, it's not external. Our personalities are beautiful and needed. So, submitted communication. We value people sharing ourselves while considering others' choices, words, and perspectives. If you were going to invite the listener to try or begin practicing this week, um, what is one way or one question that they could ask to kind of begin putting this into practice? Could I share a quick picture? And oh, then, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a, a picture that's really helped me when I'm communicating with people is thinking about um, all of a topic being like or a problem being like or this whatever you're talking about being like a diamond. Mm -hmm. And when you have a diamond or a gemstone, they have um, facets cut into them. They have, you know, they have different shapes and they have different sides. And when I'm communicating, the my practice has started being like, oh, I see one side of this gemstone, but they see another side. And it's my job in communication to turn to turn it and look at it from another perspective. Yeah. So we have this little hand motion, which you can't see, but it's like I'm turning my hand to look at all the sides. Um, that's how I'm valuing the, the perspectives. Totally. Um, and it just helps me be like, I have a perspective that I see things mm -hmm. through. And it's important for me to see other perspectives. Great picture. So that picture has been really helpful for me. It's come up multiple times. Um, especially when I'm listening to a perspective I don't particularly like, then I'm like, whoa, 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 turn the gemstone, look at it from a different perspective. Especially like on the theological deal, if you're, you know, on the heady end of the theological spectrum, hey, that's fantastic. We need to watch over our doctrine. But if you can't value someone with a different theological perspective before landing, like that is very dangerous. Well, I think it just goes back. We see in part and we hear in part. Absolutely. And I don't think it's just theology. I think. Oh yeah, everything. I think there's a lot that we are learning in our culture right now. When we, when we dig into just one perspective, it creates holes. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, so I think the um, the three words that could go along with that picture I shared is, um, am I listening? Am I considering? And am I sharing? So I think the three big words we want to walk away with is listen, consider, and share. So so maybe as someone's trying to practice this this week, the filter would be like, hey, is there someone in your life that maybe there's tension or a relationship where there's tension? And you can ask yourself the question, how am I listening, considering, and sharing with that individual? Mm -hmm. That'd be a great start to submit a communication. And it'll probably expose all of your insides that need to look at Jesus. <laughs> he was the master. Cool, babe. Well, Robin, sorry, babe, Mrs. Uh, thank you so much for being here, for submitting communication. We'll wrap this one up. Yeah. See you guys in the next episode. Bye.